her food was spilling into her lungs as I was trying to feed her with that bottle. I was continuing to drown her day after day and her lips were turning blue and she was completely limp, like a rag doll. All I was trying to do was feed my daughter. That's all I wanted to do. Many people say to me, why if it's so, you know, if this is so prevalent, if this is such an issue, why have I never heard of a child who struggles to eat? Well, the reality is um, many of us know children who struggle to eat, but we just don't know that we know them because if you're a parent suffering daily, battling to get your child to eat when they're choking, coughing, gagging, crying, begging you not to feed them, it's um, devastating. It's not something that's easy to explain to somebody else because it's often deemed as something that you must be doing wrong as a parent or that you're letting your child get away with something, that this is picky eating. We are not talking about kids who want dessert and you're trying to get them to finish their vegetables. We're talking about children where eating, drinking, swallowing can be a very painful experience, either because there's difficulty with their motility, their, um, the foods they're eating are rotting out their insides, the food is going into their lungs, which makes it very painful. And when you have a lot of negative experiences like that, and if every day you're sat down in a high chair by the one person, your primary caregivers who are supposed to love and nurture you and it's a painful and frightening experience you're going to develop some pretty severe behaviors to avoid being victimized day in and day out but parents go to drastic measures because we love our children to make sure they're thriving and they're growing and sometimes we take even more drastic measures when we're being dismissed as overreactive parents and I honestly was told I was overreacting because she was showing some weight gain on a scale that turned out to be false weight. It was fluid retention from the fluid spilling into her lungs and getting aspiration pneumonia. I was you know, dismissed in the office. I was told I was being overreacting. This is the first time I'm a mom and, and to just keep doing what I was doing. And you know, no, there was something really wrong. And, and until I fought for her and ended up sitting in an emergency room and wouldn't leave until someone would hear my voice, you know, I was continuing to drown her. I call it drowning her day after day. Zoe's story begins when she was born. So she was diagnosed as aspirating, but what did we know? We didn't know anything, so we listened. And they said, let's put in cereal into her bottle to make it what they call honey thickness. And Zoe didn't want it, she didn't. And I called and I said to the nurses, they don't, she doesn't want to drink this. And they said, well, if she doesn't drink it, we'll put her on a feeding tube. Because you're going to do a reputable damage to her lungs. I said, okay, okay, I'll just keep trying. And I kept trying. And I kept trying. And then Zoe decided that she wasn't going to drink this. She wasn't. And from crying, Zoe went silent. And she stopped. She was three months old and she stopped drinking. And she was done and that was it. And I cried to the nurses. I said, what am I gonna do? I need help, I need help. 